In this video, we start to describe the opposite process of what we've been talking about so far this chapter. So we've been describing using spontaneous chemical reactions to generate a voltage, to generate electricity. In this short video, we'll start to introduce terminology that will help describe what's what are referred to as electrolytic cells, the process of electrolysis. The first term that's defined in the chapter is that of corrosion. So when we use the term corrosion, the specific definition or uh, technical definition is that it's the deterioration of a metal by an electrochemical process. And that should sound exactly like the oxidation of metals. One classic example is the Statue of Liberty. When it was originally created, of course, we know that it's a copper coating on the outside, and so it had that noticeable copper color to it. Over the years, that copper has oxidized, so we're converting copper solid into copper 2 plus ions. And if you remember from first semester, any solution that contains copper 2 plus is a distinct blue color. And so the sheen or the hue that we see on the Statue of Liberty now has kind of this blue-green patina on it, and that's from the oxidation of copper. Another example of corrosion is that of iron. In climates that get a lot of snow and ice in the winter, cities will go through and will put sodium chloride or salt on the roads, and that's to help lower the freezing point of the ice or the snow, right? Remember colligative properties, freezing point depression when we add a solute to it. So adding that salt will help melt the ice and snow faster. However, this is showing a zoomed in version of the layer of a car. So we have our paint layer here, the purple. Well, if that paint layer gets a chip in it, that allows oxygen to come in and react with this gray in the middle is being shown as iron. So where we have those chips, oxygen comes in and will oxidize iron into rust. And so the problem that people have in those climates is that their cars eventually will start to form rust. Any chip in the paint will start to rust. A process known as cathodic protection can be used to help control the corrosion of a metal surface. To do this, a, a sacrificial metal is used. So in other words, if you have something, a very common example of this would be the hull of boats or ships or even uh, airplanes. Obviously, we don't want the shell of those to degrade or be oxidized, and so they're often coated with what's called a sacrificial metal, another metal that is easier to oxidize than the uh, hull or the coating, the main frame of the boat or the plane. And so a sacrificial metal can be plated over it. That metal will then oxidize, saving the... Uh, main metal from corroding. So the pro process of electrolysis we will describe as the last main topic for this chapter. And electrolysis is literally the reverse of a galvanic cell. So remember a galvanic cell is taking a spontaneous chemical reaction to produce a current, electricity, in electrolysis, we use electrical energy to drive a non-spontaneous chemical reaction. This is the same idea as running a battery in reverse. In other words, recharging a battery. And so this process is used in an electrolytic cell. For example, water will not spontaneously decompose into hydrogen and oxygen gases. In fact, if we were to calculate, it has a negative cell potential and a positive free energy, so therefore non-spontaneous or reactant favored. One key thing to note about electrolysis, though, is that when we separate our two half reactions, they are defined the same way. So notice our anode is still the loss of electrons on the product side. The cathode is still the gain of electrons. They're on the reactant side. So we define our two electrodes and compartments the same way. 
The image that's shown over here is showing an electrolysis apparatus. If you've seen this as a demonstration in lab, remember we use water and we usually add sulfuric acid or some type of strong acid to it to give us ions in solution. We have a voltage source. Once we apply that voltage to our apparatus, we start to create these two half reactions of the anode and the cathode. And so notice in here, we are generating gases. One of the gases is oxygen, the other one is hydrogen. Another example for electrolysis would be that of sodium chloride. One of the key things to re recognize about electrolysis is the states that have to be used. So here, when we're referring to sodium, molten sodium chloride, what we mean is that we're literally taking sodium chloride salt and heating it up until it melts. So we always want to start with a molten substance. The reason for that is, if you think about it, if I were to start with aqueous sodium chloride, that is in water. Well, if I try to pass a current through something that has sodium chloride dissolved in water, I'm actually going to separate the water first before I'm separating the sodium chlorides out. And so we can't use the aqueous form of salts. We have to use molten or the liquid state. And electrolysis is a common procedure used in industry. It is a very common one where um, a metal ion might be produced as a byproduct of a reaction. And sometimes it's easier or cheaper to perform electrolysis to get the elemental form of that metal back rather than trying to buy new versions of it. And so again, notice for sodium chloride, our anode is actually the chloride ion being oxidized down to elemental chlorine. Our cathode is the sodium ion being reduced down to elemental sodium. One of the hardest parts about electrolysis is being able to write these reactions. So the easiest way that I recommend for students is to start by writing the dissociation equation. Realizing for these that because we started with molten substances, we are producing molten substances. And now to write our half reactions, my starting point or reactant would be the sodium ion and the chloride ion. And again, the products of these are always going to be the elemental form. And it's still going to be in the molten state for metals. Chlorine, of course, will be converted into the gas state. And then we can complete our reactions by balancing our electrons and then atoms. And so this is how we can determine what our reactions would be for the anode and the cathode in an electrolytic cell. In our next video, we will look at examples of these equations again and how we calculate the amount of substance that can be obtained as the product of electrolysis.